I use ChatGPT and Kittle to help me turn a client brief into a fully finished project. And I want to show you exactly how I did it. We all get that creative block feeling sometimes, and I think this is a process that will help us move past that point. Let's start with our creative brief, which is for a music poster festival, and it reads, Sunset Echoes is a two-day indie music festival set in the California desert. It's raw, emotional, honest, a space for emerging bands and coal artists to play under open skies. The visual identity shouldn't feel polished or corporate. It should feel handmade, slightly chaotic, and real. We're drawing from vintage tour posters, punk zines, photocopied flyers, and lo-fi aesthetics. If it looks like it was screen printed in a garage or pulled from a dusty record sleeve, that's what we want. We need a hero poster for both print and digital purposes. Now, they also included some helpful info like the target audience and some actual wording that they wanna use, the content that needs to be in the poster for us. Now, there's a lot of directions we could go right now, but I find one of the most useful first steps is mood boarding. And as you can see from the brief, we actually have a fair amount of details that we can glean from to go and see what other creators and designers have done. So I really like using Pinterest, but there are definitely other reference sites you can use, and I've linked some other options for you down in the description if you wanna check those out. But just to give you an idea of some of the keywords that I used, I searched music festival posters, music poster designs, punk poster design and this was my finalized mood board which i'm pretty happy with it and it has a lot of the same kind of energy going on now at this point i'm tempted to start messing around with the design already but i still don't have a clear idea of what the focal point should be so right now we can utilize ChatGPT to give us a blueprint for completing our project now here's a breakdown of the prompt that I'm going to use. The first thing is context, which is just telling it what you're working on. Next is making sure you've uploaded the mood board and letting it know that you want ChatGPT to analyze it. Then the biggest and last part is the structure for how you want ChatGPT to respond. And I've divided that into four sections, visual characteristics, key elements, design suggestions, and composition tips. Now you can see each of these categories has subsections filled out underneath them. And I have this in a template in a Notion page that you can go and copy. So don't feel like you have to pause the screen here and write all this down. Just go to that Notion page link down in the description. You can go copy and paste that blueprint and then fill it in for yourself. After you've filled all of this in and hit go, what should follow is a detailed list in the exact categories that you asked for. You're gonna get everything from font styles and texture suggestions down to instructions on how to execute your project. And for us, that looks like typography that should have high impact letter forms that act sort of like illustrations, photos or graphics that appear collaged or manipulated. So I'm already thinking about paper, nothing glossy. It should be used to support this punk aesthetic, hypersaturated and clashing tones like neon green, hot pink, deep red, electric yellow, heavy use of halftones, risograph, grain, paper folds, Xerox blur and glitch noise. And it goes even further and breaks down the actual font suggestions like having brutalist sans serif fonts or motifs like the psychedelic Joshua tree. And then it even gave us an AI prompt to go with it if we wanna generate that as an illustration. Then it gives me practical design suggestions like what text should be biggest and most focal and also how I should think about layering the visuals that guide the eye to what matters most but it's time for us to go ahead and open up Kittle and start designing now that we have a clear idea of what we want to do. And if you wanna try Kittle and use some of the features I'm gonna be showing you in this video, you can sign up using the link below. There's no credit card or anything needed to get started. In Kittle, the first thing I'm gonna do is experiment with some type. So I'm gonna type echoes cause that's what I know needs to be the focal point from what ChatGPT was kind of talking about. And then we have this ink bleed or kind of, you know, uh, grungy aesthetic we wanna go for. So I'm going to grab this ink modern font, which I think is gonna fit really easily for this. And then we have a cool feature in Kittle where I can go down here to the transformation section and hit distort. And then I can use all of these little anchor points to get a 
different kind of, you know, chaotic looking effect is what I'm thinking. I also want something that goes with the echo motif. And so what I'm going to do is duplicate these and then change the points of all of the distortion. So some edges are going to be longer, some are going to be shorter. Like for this one, I'm going to round out the bottom of it. I'm going to take the corner and stretch it out to the left and to the right on either side and kind of create this like semi cone shape that also like maybe kind of feels like what an echo sounds like is like as it, you know, sometimes it, it starts bigger and then gets smaller and depending on where you're positioned can sound a little bit different. So I'm going to duplicate that and do it a third time. And so you can see here, I'm going to expand the left and the right, but on the bottom. So at the top, I did it into the top left and top right. Now I'm going to do that here with the bottom. And so I'm just creating this pretty chaotic looking effect here, but it's still legible. You can still kind of see what's going on. You can read the word echo, so you know that that is the focal point for this poster that we're gonna be making here, or at least it's the focal information that you should know. So if I hop back over to ChatGPT for a second, we can see it's giving us color suggestions. I like the idea of hot pink and deep red or, or like a muddy slash electric yellow. All right, so with that in mind, I'm gonna grab my text and I'm gonna turn it into that hot pink because I think that's gonna give this a very loud feeling, a very chaotic but still nice and consistent feeling. Then I'm gonna select my background and that's where I'm gonna go and turn it into this kind of muddy, electric, dark yellow. And it may not look like it goes together, but with some texture, this is gonna look pretty sick. All right, for a key visual, remember ChatGPT here gave us a prompt to use for one of those focal motifs, right? The Joshua tree. So we're gonna grab this prompt right here, which says a Joshua tree on a white background with radiating lines like sound echoes, grungy, rough edges, high contrast, and we can use Dali, which is already embedded in Kittle. So over here on the left side, we can go to Kittle AI and Dali is already embedded. I'm just gonna paste in my prompt right here and use one of the preset grunge art styles and then as we generate this image we're going to edit it a little bit i'm going to wait for this to populate here in just a second and now i'm going to take it to the back i can right click and send it to the back or any object or any image and then we can use the reframe tool in kittle which is over here on the right so if i go over here click reframe i can extend the bottom and then this shadow of this tree will basically be elongated. It'll go all the way down to the bottom, which is what we want. And then I'm gonna vectorize this because I wanna be able to change the color to anything I want. It's gonna vectorize it to be black because I only selected one color. But now I can go up here and because it's a vector illustration, I can start working with the color. And so I'm thinking of a off-white, tannish, yellow looking color, maybe, maybe a little bit more towards pink, but I want it to blend into the background a little bit easier and a little bit better. Um, and so it still gives off the desert kind of echoey, radiant vibes here. All right, so now I'm gonna hit T to add some more text and sunset is the other word that's in our main headline, right? So we have echoes already, we need sunset. I'm gonna go back over to the font panel and I'm gonna type in ink and use this other ink font called Ink World. Remember, we're still using this kind of grungy looking effect for this vibe, for this style, for this chaotic looking grungy music festival poster. And I'm gonna set this right here. And then if we think about a focal point and some texture, in our prompt under the textures category, I saw halftone dot fills and grainy risograph scenes. And we've got some of those elements for this in Kittle already. So over here in the illustrations panel, what I'm gonna do is type in distressed rectangle or you could type in box or whatever you want to do to try to find this kind of stuff and with this box right here it has a lot of grunge and stuff but i'm going to vectorize it so i can change the color because i want it to be this same pink so now that it is i'm going to make it that same hot pink and so that we can read sunset better i'm going to bring sunset to the front and then i'm going to put this box behind it and if i hold shift i can actually skew this rectangle so even though it's you know vector and scalable i can still skew it by using the shift key and just grabbing the anchor point and then I can just move around these letters, the echoes words, so that they're you know a little bit more legible in place, at least the bottom left and the middle one there. And so I can go up and I can transform the top part of this text 
because I do want it to look like it's coming from the top left portion of this poster, and that gives us that kind of like guiding motif of where the eye should go. So back over here in the illustrations panel, I'm gonna type in halftone because that was another thing that it suggested we use. And if I scroll down, obviously we have halftone illustrations, but we have these little halftone elements that are already vector. You see these little halftone dots? And we're gonna use a feature called the Shape Builder tool here in Kittle, where I can grab two different shapes and I can either cut them or merge them or blend them together. So with this shape, this distressed rectangle, how I want it, I can grab the halftone dots here and I can hold shift and grab the rectangle that is above it and I can cut it out. And over here on the right, I can just hit that subtract feature and it will take it away and you can see there are those little bit of halftone dots. And so I'm gonna bring this second one over here into the side, grab the shape and the halftone and subtract it. And so now you can see some of those halftone dots coming out of the bottom left there. And we've got a good thing going for our poster design here, but we need a couple of more elements, a couple more pieces of information. So let's go ahead and fill this in with the other important information. You can see I've already pasted here into the project. We need the date, obviously. So for that, it's going to be June 21 through the 22nd. I'm going to right justify this and make it quite a bit smaller. I still want it to be legible. It's not necessarily a tertiary piece of information, so it does need to be relatively sizable so that you can see what's going on. But 2025 isn't necessarily quite as important important because we probably won't have this poster up much after 2025 or much after June. So it's okay for 2025 to be a little bit smaller, but we still want June 21st and 22nd to be legible. Then I'm going to put in where it is. So the Joshua Tree, California, I'm going to put that text in right here. This is just a simple process of copying and pasting in the text over here in the poster design so that it's in that same ink world style font. Again, we're thinking about that either risograph or old screen printing or dusty kind of film jacket, that kind of stuff. Now, I'm gonna use a little bit of a different font called Ink Modern, and the reason I'm using this one is because it's a lot more condensed. So you see how it's a lot taller, I'm going to be able to fit longer names and longer information in a shorter amount of space by using a condensed ink style font. And this is going to be a pretty simple, easy process as well. I'm just going to be copying in each part of this text on the left side and putting them in a cascading effect. Now you can see right here, I'm not really paying too much attention of where I put them just yet because I am going to play with this to see how I want to get it. And now we want to make sure that this is still Still giving off a little bit of a chaotic energy, right? We're going to give it off kind of like a punk, grungy, against the grind kind of style. So we don't want to necessarily be super grid heavy with this. We just want to be, you know, cool, whatever looks a little bit dis disorganized, but still able to be read. So this takes a little bit of playing around. I'm just going to be shifting up and down different pieces of the text to see what it looks like. I'm like rotating them a little bit. I'm changing the position of the words, trying to see what looks best. And then I'm putting special guests at the end with these asterisks on it because, you know, I don't necessarily know who the, the special guests are, but we do want to call a little bit of attention to it down there at the bottom of that. And so now I can grab all of these together. I can group them with command or control G so that I can easily grab them and move them at the same time. And then I'm going to duplicate it over here on the right. I'm going to put in the remaining information that we need here on the poster design, which you can see right here is a desert gathering. This is a little bit of what you might call filler text, but I think it does help, especially fill in the right side of the poster because now it was starting to look a little bit you know, top and left heavy, but now that we have this extra information here, it helps kind of level it out. And then we can put the rest of the information like where they should go to get more information, like the website, and then, you know, an Instagram or a TikTok handle or whatever that might be for them to find it on social media. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that as well. Go in here, delete that, and paste in the tag. And then I'm gonna grab both of these and right align them and move them down because we do have a QR code that was given to us to put in here as well. And I've already vectorized this, which is super cool because now I can change the colors of this QR code illustration. You can do this in Kittle, by the way, the same way I vectorized the illustration or the same way I vectorized the block. You can vectorize QR codes in Kittle, which is super neat. And so now that we have all of this in place, I'm going to grab this distressed 
block and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see some of this text that's layered over top of it. Because remember, we want to have this distressed look and feel. I'm gonna find a couple of other things that I think might be nice, like this little splatter, which is vector by the way, so I can change the color of it and I can still use the shape builder to knock it out from this block, which I did just there. And so now you can see some of that splatter has been subtracted from this rectangle and what started as its own kind of distressed image over in the elements panel has now become something super super custom which is nice and so now what we're going to do is go back over into the illustrations panel and find a little bit more texture for the you know background motif and we saw something that said scribbles or scribble drawing and so i'm going to make this the same color but then change it slightly to be a little bit more red and the reason is it's still against the grind there. It's not going to be exactly the same. It looks a little bit misplaced, like it, it's an element that just was like accidentally put on there. And so that, that's the idea. Again, going along with the brief is that some of this stuff just looks like it was a little bit random. Like where did that, was it, is that crayon? You know, what is it? That's kind of the idea. And then we can go up here and instead we're going to type in paper because we're going to look for some ripped paper with some lines on it. I really like this one right here. And we are going to use this with a blending mode to give it a overall printed look and feel. So over here in the right side, you see all these blending modes. I'm going to hit darken, and then I can play with my opacity, and you can see the wrinkles kind of come through. So this actually looks like paper, which is pretty cool. Now you can experiment with different blending modes to see what you want. You can also add textures from the texture panel. I am going to add an extra halftone texture. And as you can see, if I add it, it, it does something crazy because we need to change the blending mode. So over here, I'm going to change this to color dodge and then severely decrease the amount because this makes it look weathered. If I zoom in here, you can see it makes it look weathered and it's basically being masked over top of this. You see all those little half tones give it more of that printed look and feel. And maybe you want to back that up or down depending on what kind of half tone texture you're using. But anyway, it depends on what your, your brief is, but I think this one looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do some tidying up on my colors because we've added these textures, which does influence how the colors are seen. So we do maybe need to adjust our yellow or orange a little bit, maybe make it a little bit brighter so that it's gonna come through when it's printed well. And as you can see right here, this is our finished finalized print poster design for the Sunset Echoes Music Festival used with ChatGPT and Kittle to get it done. So I hope that was helpful for how you can get a sense of using ChatGPT to offload the heavy lifting and give you a step-by-step -step process, including your key visuals and your styles, all while using Kittle, which has everything you need from the fonts and the textures, the advanced tools, the shape builders, things like that to get the job done. And we didn't even scratch the surface really of what Kittle can do in this video. So like I said, if you want to try that out, try Kittle out, you can use the link down in the description. And if you feel like it's a good move for you, I do have a promo code down for you to get a discount off your first subscription, but you can use a lot of those features right now. Go give it a go. It's free to sign up. Like I said no credit card required and if this content was helpful let me know down in the comments if you want to see more processes like this we've been asked to do more full branding projects but i did think that this was a helpful first example to show you a dedicated piece like a poster where you can see what goes into it but anywho let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos just like this one and we will see you in the next video Thank you